name's Gary Charles and uh, I'm an award winning author of uh, Heaven's Falling series and now the novel adaptation of Summer of the Massacre. Excellent. When did you first um, hear about Summer of the Massacre and how did you get involved in the project? Uh, it was about a month before Christmas 2006 and I was talking to the director over the internet, ended up talking on the phone and they basically said look we want somebody to write the novel, can you do it? With no screenplay, all we have is the original movie, but we just, as long as the characters are the same, you can do whatever the hell you want with it. So it was like, the carrot and the donkey idea, it was like, right, excellent. So I went, I spent three and a half weeks, and the novel was finished. Another week of proofreading with a very good friend of mine called CJ Lines, and it was ready to go to the printers. Um, and then they got in touch with me and asked me to help out with the screenplay for the remake because they had it, but then they wanted bits from the book putting into the new version of the film. So there is going to be a few flashbacks for Hammerhead's past when he's a child and his father that are going to be quite gruesome, I hope. For some of our readers, can you just give us sort of brief uh, summary of uh, the premise? Uh, some of the massacre, Ed Craven. As a matter of fact, if we wait here. Ed Craven wasn't born into a normal family. He was risen to be an animal, a hunter, and a feaster of human flesh. And four vacationing university students stumble upon his territory, which in the book there's the whole village. Um, and he hunts that area, and everybody's moved away. And it's just, he's got free reign, lives in this old farmhouse, and he collects the bodies, he, he eats bits of them. What he doesn't eat, he has a mass grave outside in the woods. And basically, he hunts them down one at a time. And the only slight difference between the new movie and the book is the main character in the book is pregnant. Uh, just because it gave a whole new aspect. She's not fighting for just herself. She's fighting for the child in a in womb. And I just thought it added to real human element. This is, this is something that was missing from the, the first version of the film. And you thought you'd, yeah. you'd add on that. Yeah. Give it a bit more depth. Yes, well, in the original film, Katie's character was missing. She was pregnant. The actual actress was pregnant. And you could tell in the film she was pregnant. But they never really touched on it as much as I, I would have liked them to. So in the book especially, the fight is more to save a child than herself. And I think it just adds a really good element to the story. Unfortunately, it won't be in the remake because the censors don't like putting a pregnant woman through so much grief, it's, uh, sadly. But, but of course, you can be more extreme in the, in the novel. Oh, definitely. No, no, it surprises me there's no age ratings on books at all. Uh, and people call, I've had, I had Ed Tudor Paul come up to me earlier and say, would this be suitable for my 12-year-old boy? No, 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 no. It's no. really extreme. Then, it's it is quite nasty. I know uh, the director of Live Feed, Ryan Nicholson, which is one of the nastiest films I've seen in recent months, he basically he gave me a really wonderful quote saying that it made the hills of eyes look like a picnic. Oh. And also you're getting some, uh, some good notice from directors like Tim Sulla. Oh yeah, Tim Sulla, he was one of the first people I got in touch with through MySpace, yeah. stupidly enough, and it was a case of, he knew Bryn, and I said, could I really, can I just send you a PDF version? of the novel, have a read, if you like it, give me a quote, and he basically came back with, yeah, you know, uh, what was he, he said, takes horror to a whole new level of fucking nasty, this guy will make your toes curl, and it's like, it's quite an accolade, it is, Tim Sullivan, it's like, I cannot believe this, and I'm hoping at some point, it will bring him work doing other novel adaptations yeah. for movies. Still write the stuff I personally want to write. But if I could get commissions doing this type of thing, because I mean a company would spend four and a half thousand pounds to put a one-page advert in, say, Bazaar magazine. For four thousand pounds, I'll give them a hundred and fifty to two hundred page advert. That this took three, three, three weeks to write. That was three and a half weeks all in. What's good, what's good? Do you have like a method in the uh, time that you write? I have a full time job as an electrician wow. and basically I just work around that and when I've got, it wasn't a deadline, it was a job and it was like, I've got to finish it. So it was every minute I wasn't at work, I was writing and when I was at work, if it was my break, I was writing so it got handwritten up and then typed up when I got home. That's very encouraging to like inspiring writing. Oh yeah, I mean usually, I mean especially this time of year now, the usual thing is I'm on an afternoon shift, I don't start work till 2 in the afternoon, so I'll get up at maybe 5 o'clock, half past 5, and I will write until dinner time, and that's it, I mean, the other book I wrote, this one, 
tell us a little bit about uh, it. This was my labour of love. I actually wrote this in the sequel that's twice, well, a half again as big. And I wrote both of those in ten months. Wow. Uh, and it was basically, the publisher said, look, we've got to cut it in half, it's too big. So, so essentially, you've got your right yeah, it was one novel, two, uh, and it, it went absolutely bananas, and I'm now working on a third one, and I already know, I'm only a hundred pages into it, and I already know it's going to be another two books. I'm going to have to cut it in half. Tell us a little bit about this. It's, uh, it's more dark fantasy, but it's very horrific. I mean, and it's about, it all starts out with the main character, Virgil Cain. He gets murdered in the first chapter, wakes up in a hospital room that's not quite normal, finds out that he's in limbo, and the nurse that's been looking after him is his mother, who's been dead from cancer for sort of six years. Uh, and basically God wants to give him the job of finding out who murdered him. And as it progresses, he finds out that he's linked to biblical history in a big way, and that everything that's happening and everything that will happen is because of his actions when when he was around sort of eons ago and he's got to put everything right again and it took the whole the whole two books just to tell that tale and there was still some loose ends so hence another another book on this way so you've been getting some, some notice from some, uh, some top horror oh yeah I mean, the best one of the best contacts was Sean Hudson um, he got into, I got in touch with him through his website and just said could I send you a copy of my book and he actually answered on his website because I'd never heard anything I went back to his website six months later and there's this message on his website saying Gary Charles where's my copy of Heaven's Falling you bastard wow so I thought right I sent it to his publisher uh, about two months later I got an A4 letter back sort of saying how much he'd enjoyed it and then I even got a quote off him just saying how immensely impressive it was <laughs> Can you read us the quote? You I've, I've got the quote right here, and the quote from Sean Hudson, I couldn't believe it, was immensely impressive. The style is as direct as a knife to the heart, well crafted, and it grips like a fucking vice. <laughs> you, you just cannot buy that kind of quote or publicity. Um, I mean, one that, especially from it, authors that you admire. Uh, oh, much. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I went to uh, Horrifying last year, the American convention, and one of the biggest writers in America at the moment is called Brian Keane, and I, I got a parcel through the post the other day, and it was his latest book signed to me, and he's at the World Horror Convention this weekend, and he just had Wish You Were Here, and it was like, this is excellent. It was just like, you can't believe it, because they are the people I look up to. And they're already enjoying my stuff, and it's like, how the hell have I that done this? Very encouraging. Too. Oh yeah, it, I mean, I met another lad uh, called Joe Hill, and I can assure everybody now, he's going to be the biggest literary thing this year. He's got a book out called Heart Shape Box, uh, it, and everybody, I bought his book of short stories before I knew who he was, but his dad is Stephen King. And of course, it's, yeah. And it, I'm not kidding, even without the Stephen King thing, everybody should buy that book because it's awesome. And I spent half an hour talking to him without even realising who he was. And so he dropped the King name? Yeah, on purpose, on purpose, so he could make it with the short stories and everything first. That's amazing. Unfortunately, as soon as the book come out, the newspapers have picked every news article has said, so I'm not letting out any secrets, every news article about him, somewhere in it, Stephen King is mentioned, which is a damn shame. Because, yeah. I mean, he's going to sell yeah. with a Stephen King tag, but it deserves to sell for Joe Hill, because he's absolutely out of that. So, uh, what next for you, then? Uh, like I say, I'm working on a Heaven's Falling 3. Um, I have a screenplay for a short novel I wrote, sat with these raw branded films in America. They're only small, but they've got that under consideration. Uh, I might be doing a prequel to The Summer of the Massacre, but take it a whole new level, because, I mean, the, character, the main killer's called... In book form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the killer's called Ed Craven, and I, I really want to write a book just called Craven and base it about his family back in medieval times when they first got sort of the origins of the family and the torture equipment in medieval times would just be unbelievable. Uh, what about uh, your involvement in the Summer of Massacre remake? Uh, actually, stupidly enough, like I said, I helped with the screenplay and there's, there's a tramp character in it and I am going to cameo as oh, the tramp. Hence, hence the bearded growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. that'll be worth it. Well, well, Thanks for this. Thank you.